charm for us, you know. So, sing it out. Oh, when the night is frightful, the fire is so delightful, and since we no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It does not show signs of stopping, and I brought some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When they finally kiss goodnight, how I hate going down in the snow. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. The fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbye. But as long as you allow me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. The fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbye. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Let it snow! And you know, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know me from my patriotic music. I can't let any season go by without singing these great songs. You know them, I know them. You love them, I love them. Put your hands together. Come on, here we go. Here we go. That's 
is not only is that the very first song that I ever performed with the great Boston Pops on the 100th anniversary of the song with my, my mentor, Harry Ellis Dixon, who was first chair under Arthur Fiedler for 50 years and invited me to sing America the Beautiful on its 50th, uh, as you were, 100th anniversary with the Boston Pops on Cape Cod. That's how this whole singing trooper thing got started. But I'm um, even more incredible about the story. Now, I told you the story about Kathleen Lee Bates, how she wrote the poem as she was on the top of Pikes Peak in Colorado. But what people don't realize is that this poem was not always attached to the piece of music, the tune that you know and love so well. In the beginning, America the Beautiful sounded different because it was attached to a different piece of music, which all of you know very well. Now, what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna do a demonstration. I'm gonna sing for you how America the Beautiful used to sound in the beginning, I want to see if anybody can guess what the original tune was. I will give you a hint. It's very famous around this time of year, and it's a famous Scottish folk hymn. America the Beautiful used to sound like this. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of green, of purple mountains, Majesty above the fruited plains. America, oh America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. What's that song? Oh, right up front. What is your name, young lady? Lucille. Did guess old Lang Syne. Please stand up. Oh, no. oh, Lucille. Oh, come on. Oh, you're old. I'll come down to you. Lucille's gonna sing it with me now. Oh, oh, yes, you are. Should old acquaintance be for God? This song is so famous to all of you, but the first time I ever sang it, it wasn't in front of an audience. It was just for a couple of friends. I was down at my high school. I graduated from a military academy down in, at, in Front Royal, Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia. And before you ask me, no, a judge did not send me to military school. I, I went on my own volition. And uh, it was a Methodist school, so we were in charge of decorating the chapel for Christmas, right? And down in Front Royal, Virginia, it's right in the Shenandoah Valley, one of the most beautiful places in this United States. If you've ever been there, Skyline Caverns, Luray Caverns, just the map, it's just gorgeous. Well, you know, it started snowing, and not just snowing, it was those big, light, snowflake snow and I was just so moved we had all the wreaths up and the, the the chapel just looked so beautiful and I started singing this song and I want you to all join me in Irving Berlin's White Christmas <laughs>
without the other Christmas. Right, baby? Can't have a white Christmas without a blue Christmas. Oh, yeah, honey. Oh, yeah. I'll have a hot blue, blue, blue Christmas without you. I'll be so blue, 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 blue sinking. Decorations of red on a green Christmas tree. Oh, won't it be the same, dear? If not, I can go with me and with those blue snowflakes start falling. Oh, and that's when those blue. To. He was known as Mary Alonzo, the greatest of the great tenors. And he would listen to Mary Alonzo sing, and he would be like, hmm, hmm, how about I sing like that? Don't want to make... So Elvis and his songwriters, they took some of Mary Alonzo's greatest, greatest Italian songs, they sped them up, and they got hits out of them. Hits like you may know, um, uh, O Sola Mia, he made into It's Now or Never. He took the great Torna Sorrenta, come back to Sorrento, and he made it into Surrender. But during this time of year, Mary Alonza is pretty much very, very famous 
for these incredible church songs especially the one and only O Holy Night Oh, 
Folks, you got my sleigh tonight. Then how the reindeer loved him, and they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer, you'll go down to history. She knows all the words. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. Reindeer. And a very shiny nose. Like the light bulb. And if you ever saw it, saw it. you wouldn't say it blows. Like a flashlight. All of the other reindeer. Reindeer. You still have to call him names. Like Pinocchio. They never let poor Rudolph. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Ho, ho, you've got a window of earth so bright. Won't you guys stay tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, loved him. and they shouted out with glee. Give me! off the red-nosed reindeer, reindeer. you'll go down in this Anyway, you know, I've been singing ever since I was a little boy. When I first started singing, you know, I had this real high, like, Vienna Boys Choir sound to me. And then my voice changed, and what happened was it started getting lower and lower and lower. Matter of fact, it got so low that when I was in middle school, high school, I used to walk around all the time pretending I was Darth Vader, you know? That's how low my voice got. I would go into my classrooms and I'd be like, Luke. I am your father. You know, and the teachers used to be so mad at me. But, you know, the thing about it is, is all the tenors get all the leads in opera. All the baritones, they get all the leads in, on Broadway. What do basses get? Nothing. Nothing. We're always these very dark, scary characters, you know, uh, the lurking around in the shadows and all this other stuff. I mean, Miss, uh, Mr. Warfield sang an incredible song, Old Man River. That's a beautiful bass song, but everything else is very scary. So I love it when this time of year comes around because I get to check to see if I still have this lower register, you know, because for some reason, after I got married and had kids, my voice started going up. And up, and up, you know, I'm afraid I'm gonna end up like Michael Jackson or something, I don't know. So let's see if I can pull this one off right here. <laughs> oh, me one, Mr. Grace. Really are you? You're as cuddly as a cactus, charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel, Mr. Grinch. You're a monster, Mr. Grinch. Your heart's a nerdy hole. Your brain is full of spice and garlic in your soul, Mr. Grinch. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole, Mr. Grinch. You're a foul one, Mr. Grinch. You're a nasty, wasty skunk. Your heart is full of unwise socks. Soul is full of gunk, Mr. Grinch. The three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote, stink, stank, stunk, Mr. Grinch. You're a vile one, Mr. Grinch. You have the bites in your smile. You have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. Given the choice between the two of you, I take that seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. Oh, great fun. Thank you to all my preachers.
And then of course, we can't forget the big guy. You better watch out, better not cry, better not pout, I'm just telling you why. What? Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a mess, checking it twice, gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sits you while you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good, for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out, better not cry, better not pout, I'm gonna tell you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. With curly head dolls, the coddle and coo, elephant boats and those kitty cars too. Santa Claus is coming to town. With little tin horns, little toy drums, fruity toot toot, and those rummy tum tums. Santa Claus is coming. What is in there? To town. All the kids and girls and boy and man will have a jubilee. That got now build a toy land all around that Christmas tree. Oh, you better watch out. Better not cry. Better not pout. I'm to tell you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Ho! Oh. He's making a list. Checking it twice, gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus is calling to town. All the kids and girls and boy and lad will have a jubilee. They're gonna build a toy and land all around that Christmas tree. Oh, you better watch out, better not cry, better not pout, I will tell you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, yeah, don't you shake, better not cry, better not pout, I'm gonna tell you why, Santa Claus is coming to town, he's coming to town! Oh. Well, this is a wonderful time of year, and, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me why I'm so patriotic, they say, oh, because you're United States Marine, is that why? No, no, no. Oh, because you're a Massachusetts State Trooper, served the people of Commonwealth, right? Nope, that's not why. I'm so grateful that I was born in this wonderful nation. You see, I was given up for adoption when I was an infant baby, and I was lucky enough to have two wonderful people bring me into their home. My father, Dr. Arnold Clark, was one of the premier geneticists in the entire world. He used to shoot up bugs into space for NASA before the astronauts went up. He used to check the radioactive and mutative aspects on living organisms in outer space so it wouldn't affect the astronauts. So anyway, uh, yeah, so growing up with a geneticist was very interesting. <laughs> Take your kid to work day with a geneticist. Is, <laughs> I'd show up, you know, and this is real, real true story. I'd show up and he'd say, Daniel, I need a drop of your blood. And I'm like, okay, Dad, here you go. <laughs> and he'd take a drop of my blood, he'd put it on a slide, He'd take me down to the electron microscope. He would put the slide in and he would take a photograph of my chromosomes. He would then print it out and then he would take me upstairs and he'd say, okay, Daniel, these are your chromosomes. I want you to cut them all out and put them on a piece of paper and line them up two by two exactly how they're supposed to be. So that was like my life growing up. So if you want to know why I'm whack, that's why. Anyway, but not only that, it's my father, well, he took me to synagogue, on, to temple on Saturdays, and my mother, Constance, took me to the Methodist church on Sundays, you know? And so I had a wonderful, I had a wonderful religious upbringing, I really did. And, uh, you know, back in the day when I was growing up, there was no political correctness. You know, the guys, the young, my young friends were not nice to me. If I ever wore a yarmulke to school, you know, they'd give me a hard time, and i go, okay, okay. I said, well, let me see, I have eight days of Hanukkah and one day of Christmas, so who's getting the presents here? But anyway, 
Um, those of you who may be celebrating Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah. We don't have as many great songs as you guys have for Christmas. However, this is wonderful, O Hanukkah. Hanukkah, Hanukkah, come light the menorah. Let's have a party, we'll all dance the horror. Gather round the table, we'll bring you a treat. Dreidels to play with, rockers to eat. And while we are playing, the candles are burning low. For one great night, this bread is sweet light. Remind us of days of ago. For one great night, this bread is sweet light. To remind us of days of ago. Hanukkah, Hanukkah, come light the menorah. Let's have a party, we'll all dance for horror. Gather round the table, we'll bring you a treat. Dreidels to play with, and rockets to eat. While we are playing, the cabs of burn low. The one for his night, his friends with light, to remind us of tears on the go. The one for his night, his friends with light, to remind us of tears on the go. The one for his night, his friends with light. Remind us of days along a road. Hey! Now, this is a part of the program when I get into our tribute to the men and women who serve the United States military. And I'll be starting off with a song that you probably won't. Realize many of you know the story I've told it before But before we go any further uh, we have to do it to tell you that Many of you know that our son was a midshipman at the United States Naval Academy He was a late gymnast and he competed for Navy men's gymnastics for four years He is now graduated last May and he is a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps He is serving Right now, training down a place called Quantico, Virginia, where they make officers of Marines. After he has done his training there, they will immediately send him to a place that you know very well, Pensacola, Florida, where he will learn to fly aircraft for the United States Marine Corps. So we're very, very proud of him. This song was written many years ago in a beautiful country called Austria. And there was this young priest, you know, and he was really worried that he wouldn't have any kind of music for his Christmas Mass because, you see, the local river had flooded and ruined the church organ. So he went to his music director, Franz, and he says, Franz, can you write a melody for me for guitar? Because I've been working on this poem so we can have music for Christmas Mass. And he says, sure, Father, I can do that. And this little priest unveils one of the greatest of all Christmas songs of all time. The story gets even better. Here comes World War II, terrible fighting, terrible fighting between the Allied troops and the German troops up at a place called No Man's Land. And the story is so fantastic. All of a sudden, during this terrible fighting, the Allied troops heard what they thought was singing. And they said, are oh, the German troops singing Christmas carols? And they stopped and they listened. And after they were done singing, out of respect, the Allied troops echoed back by singing the first Noel. And then after that song was over, someone had the guts to stand up out of the mud, out of the muck, in the line of fire and say, no shooting, no shooting. And it wasn't the politicians, it wasn't the generals, it were the soldiers on the ground who declared their own Christmas truce. And for just a little while, they crossed no man's land, a place where you would be sure to die during combat. And they introduced each other. They spoke of their homeland. They shared a pint. They trimmed the trees. They, they had played some cards, played some soccer. 
And this was all because of this song written so many years ago by this young priest. Please join us in singing Silent Night. <laughs> hours ago we just we just received our first grandchild we haven't, we haven't seen her yet as soon as we leave here we're going to see her because our daughter had some complications she's okay but grandpa's having a tough time here <laughs> That's all right. Grandma will take care of him. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm going to be Dolly. He's going to be Pop. We're going to be Dolly Pop. <laughs> Oh, 
a United States Marine, I take the greatest pride in my service in the Marine Corps. Now, you know my hymn from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of... Yes. If you serve the United States Army, you may know your hymn to Quezons Go Rolling. Yes. They changed the word just a little bit. Now called Army First to Fight. The tune Quezons is still the same. If you serve in the United States Navy, your iconic song, Anchors... Oh, yeah. If you serve the United States Air Force or Army Air Corps, you were represented by Wild Blue. Yes, our newest branch of service is known as the Space Force. They just unveiled their hymn and their motto, Semper Supra, always above. And there's a group of men and women who, who not only guard our shores, but they're deployed in combat venues all over the world. Their hymn, Semper Paranus, always ready, the United States Coast Guard. And then there's a group that was long forgotten, supporting and defending our nation since 1775 in both peace and in war. I'm referring to the Merchant Marines, many times sunk by enemy submarines right off the coast of the United States. Now, I would respectfully request, if you have served, had a family member who has served, been married to a serviceman or servicewoman, do me a favor. You don't have to stand up, but raise your hand when I sing your hymn the order of military hymns that is going to be the Merchant Marines, the Coast Guard, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Space Force, and then the United States Marine Corps. These are the men and women who defend the United States of America. You guys ready? Here we go. Merchant Marines on deck. Merchant Marines, anybody? Keep home, my lads, keep home. I hit so long, long. Fighters, 
God bless you all. Please sing with us.